Good evening everyone, it's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office with another detailed U.S. weather forecast for May 29th, 2023. In today's update, we are going to be discussing about an upcoming major heat wave that is going to cause a lot of problems for the northern tier, for the Midwest, and even for the Deep South with temperatures that could break records. We're also going to be looking at your overall weather pattern because this is very much like an El Nino. If you're new to the channel and you really like these detailed updates, please consider subscribing if you're new, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. So with that being said, here's a look at your current weather conditions happening across the United States. This is what I always like to present you all at the beginning of my videos because there's always weather to talk about, right? Isn't that the most awesome thing possible? So let's take a look here at the eastern U.S. Because we are seeing pop-up storms across pretty much much of Virginia, West Virginia, including for northern portion there of North Carolina. Temperatures there in the 70s, upper 60s, kind of feeling a little muggy because of that tropical moisture that's rotating around the upper level low pressure disturbance. There's even been some strong thunderstorms and some lightning strikes associated with this moisture moving across Petersburg, Richmond, Charlottesville, Harrisonburg, Roanoke, getting some showers out of this storm system, Greensboro, some showers passing by to your northwest. We also got more pop-up storms there in Elizabeth City. But that's not where we're only seeing active weather. Let's go further west, shall we? We're also seeing some showers and some thunderstorms happening across much of central and southern Oklahoma. If you're in Dallas, Texas, going across I-20, we are seeing some pop-up storms there. Not only that, I-30, also um, across eastern Texas, we're seeing some stationary type storms that are popping up. We got more storms that are popping up down here across San Antonio on I-10 with temperatures right now that have rapidly fallen because of the rain-cooled air. You were in the 70s and 80s, back down into the 60s now, thanks to those storms that have really erupted this afternoon. But also, there's more activity in other parts of the country. We're going to actually look at the north here. We have been seeing some really strong showers and thunderstorms here across much of Nebraska, as you can see here clearly if my epic pin could actually work. So again, some storms here really firing up. These have been capable of producing some uh, significant hail one to two inches in diameter some strong winds and even a spin up or two we got more showers and thunderstorms going on across bismarck on the i-94 corridor through north dakota we got more showers and thunderstorms going on across much of the west here part of the monsoon that hasn't let up at all we're seeing those storms pop up across elko on i-80 over winnemucca in Nevada, Reno, Nevada, seen some of those storms, including for portions of Salt Lake City, some storms there that popped up earlier. Those have since dissipated. And this is kind of the pattern that we are in, thanks to a cutoff low, kind of an El Nino pattern, where we get this zonal flow kind of cutting across much of the United States in this sort of flow that we're seeing. So without further ado, let's take a look at your current weather not your current weather let's take a look at your seven day forecast because there are more changes coming as always i like looking at the european model because it's one of the more accurate models out there in the weather world so this look at may 29th into the 30th we are looking at again that storm that we were talking about in the beginning of the video on wsv3 over virginia north carolina we got our showers and storms going on across the northern tier of the united states we also got the monsoon that is continuing across california nevada again that's gonna be the theme going forward you can see these pop-up storms we're also seeing some showers and thunderstorms going on across central southern texas including for oklahoma let's put this into motion for tomorrow afternoon this is for may the 30th we're going to be seeing more shower chances over the high plains the northern plains including for the great basin of idaho montana wyoming if you're in california the mountains there can see more afternoon cloud buildups so more small hail strong winds some heavy rainfall so if you're doing anything outdoors just be aware 
The skies will get nasty by the afternoon hours. We've been through this. You know the drill. Sunny skies, blue skies in the morning, turning stormy in the afternoon. Some of those storms, again, could contain some small hail, some strong erratic wind gusts, maybe some haboobs and dust storms. And most worst possible scenario here would be a tornado or so, maybe a funnel cloud, maybe a land spout. So going forward here into uh, May the 31st, again, same thing, showers and thunderstorms popping up across much of the Midwest, the high plains. If you are in the desert southwest, the inner mountain west, we're going to see the same pattern. This continues for June 1st, so the first day of June, going to see quite a bit of more moisture here, more pop-up storms for northern Texas, for Oklahoma, for Kansas, so if you're in Kansas City, if you are in, say, the Dakotas, minute, if you are in, say, uh, Fargo, if you are in, um, say, uh, Omaha, Nebraska, just be aware there's going to be storms. If you're going to Yellowstone, southern Montana, you're going to see more of these pop-up storms. Not only that, there is more thunderstorm chances for Florida. Not only that, also for Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Canada, definitely want to be aware of that. Let's go to the third now for your Friday. Yes, uh, of course, you're going to see more showers and thunderstorms again for the same locations. Isn't that interesting? We're just going to see the repeat here. Only we're going to kind of put an X here over this here. Maybe an isolated shower or two for the mountains. But otherwise, a lot of this area here is going to have the best chances of thunderstorms. Some of this, again, we could see locally severe storms. Some of them, again, producing hail that could be pretty large. Some damaging wind gusts and some dust storms. Same thing goes for Sunday for June 3rd. Again, afternoon thunderstorms, showers, the same repeat uh, carbon copy week of storms kind of on again, off again kind of deal. It's probably not until we get probably towards, say, Sunday for June the 4th and the 5th when the pattern might change a little bit, but still, we're going to be seeing shower chances here across the high plains, across the desert southwest. And this is about the time that monsoon really kind of kicks into high gear for the summer season as we get that desert southwest ridge that typically builds on in. Now, that's a look at your precipitation forecast. Let's take a look now at your temperature forecast because, yeah, there's a big heat wave coming. I promise you all, you're not going to like those temperatures that I'm about to tell you. So make sure you are prepared of what you're about to see. Make sure you wear your shorts. Make sure you jump in the pool because it's going to be pretty warm out there by the end of this week. Kind of enough with the cooler weather. Now it's time to turn up the heat a little bit, right? So let's go into tomorrow. We're just going to kind of fast forward this. Not so bad tomorrow. You're going to see temperatures in the upper 80s, maybe some low 90s, but more than likely in the 80s for the Midwest. For Canada, my goodness, going to be really warm for Ontario there. If you're in Manitoba, if you're in Saskatchewan, if you're in Alberta, Canada, 70s and 80s. Going to love those warm temperatures. You're probably used to it by now. For Florida, temperatures in the mid to upper 80s, but going forward, going to be warming up. Let's turn this into Wednesday now. It's going to be warming up a little bit more, especially over this area is where I'm zeroing in. Where We're going to probably see some lower 90s for central Illinois, for eastern Iowa, for central and eastern Missouri. If you're in Arkansas, if you're in Louisiana, if you're in Mississippi, it's going to be a very warm late May for you all. Yeah, it's going to end on a really warm note. Fortunately, you're not going to see any tornadoes or any severe outbreaks, so you don't need to worry much about that. You're only going to have to worry about the heat for right now with some sticky conditions because the dew points are going to be a little high. It's going to lead to some muggy conditions, be warm. It's going to kind of be sticky out there. So let's now go into your Thursday. It's going to be warmer. Temperatures again in the Midwest. Look at this. Very warm up here in southern Ontario, southern Quebec, Canada in the 90s. Yes, holy cow. That's crazy. It'll be very warm up here across the northeastern U.S. It's going to just get warmer. Look at this. Temperatures possibly mid-90s for Indiana, for Ohio, for Michigan, for Illinois. Really warm. And look at this. Very warm on Saturday. Temperatures in the 90s for sure, uh, no doubt about it. Maybe even some upper 90s across Illinois, across 
Tennessee, if you're in Mississippi, really warm temperatures, okay? And look at this. We might even get close to 100 degrees in the deep south here. Even the Ozarks could get close to 100 degrees for your Sunday. So Saturday and Sunday could be real, real big days to watch for heat-related illnesses, heat stroke. Take um, the weekend pretty seriously here as far as temperatures go. Limit outdoor activities to the early morning hours because look at this. It's going to be very hot by Monday and Tuesday for the deep south. Not so bad if you're back west, though. Fortunately, we're going to kind of keep the heat over towards the east. So now, as far as these temperature anomalies go, you definitely need to be aware of this. This is going to get a lot of your guys' attention. So let's go into the one day temperature anomaly forecast. So in simple terms, the blue colors here indicate below average temperatures, the oranges and reds, and even some gray colors indicate above average temperatures. The higher in the scale is all down here. So just in case you guys didn't see that, there is your scale pointing to your temperature departures and the conversion in Fahrenheit. So going to days three and four here on the daily average, you're going to definitely see a huge warm up. I'm not joking at all. Temperatures 10 to 20 degrees above normal. This could continue all the way through perhaps day four and day, uh, yeah, day four through six. Temperatures here anywhere between 15 to maybe 20 degrees above normal. And it just stays there. It's not breaking anytime soon. And this is look at your day eight through nine. Temperatures slightly above average here, but look at this. For the Canada, for the northern tier of the United States, very, very El Nino-like. I am not joking at all, because this is where it's it's gonna stay cool, right? You got the cooler weather here in the desert southwest, you got the cooler weather here, and you got ridging on top of that. So that's gonna lead to an El Nino pattern that looks to really materialize here. And of course, we are looking at an El Nino right now. So it's not surprising to see this pattern verify. So when we take a look at our geopotential height here, this is basically a representation of our air masses. So follow the reds here. That's upper level ridging. We're seeing higher than normal heights. That means above normal temperatures. And look at this. We got low level or kind of upper level disturbances beneath this ridge and it really amplifies by this weekend look what like by friday and saturday very strong ridge here i mean wow this is really you don't see this very often oh an omega block we call it where we get the flow that does this right more so kind of like this on average and then we get the split flow like this, right? So we get a ridge that's up in here in northern tier US, including the su central southern Canada in Hudson Bay, get this very strong ridge that's in place. And as long as this thing is in place, temperatures are not going anywhere. You're going to warm up and you're going to stay warm probably for a while here. You can see that ridge really is on top of you all probably through the middle of next week. Yeah, that's June the 7th that we're looking at here with low pressure areas in California and the southeastern U.S. Well, that's going to sum it up for today's video, you all. If you did enjoy the video and the update on the weather pattern that I presented here, please consider subscribing if you're new. If you haven't subscribed, I would really highly recommend doing so hitting the like button, and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. I hope you guys have a very much fantastic rest of your Memorial Day Monday here. As always, I'm in the weather office keeping you all updated here as often as I can possible with my busy schedule this week. But that's going to do it with today's weather update. Thank you all for watching.